Hello folks, we're at the Corsair Suite at CES 2020 and one of the first things we're going to be taking a look at is the new Concept Orion, which is this Capellix array of LEDs. Now what this basically is, is 150 LEDs that are built straight onto the glass panels themselves, so they're held on using a transparent film which is attached in the factory to the glass and then that's plugged into say a lighting node pro or a commander pro controller and then that of course goes into iq which allows you to control every single one individually so the cool thing about that is of course you've got this incredibly like different looking array of leds that goes across the panel both on this side and this side over here and then you can program that to have any sort of lighting effects that you want in iq which can then going to fit with your keyboard, your mouse, peripherals, and also all the other components that might be inside the PC, including your fans, memory, all of that sort of stuff. Now, we haven't really heard much about availability or when, how much this is all going to be costing. I think I've heard things about between $100 to $110 um, for the panels, but it's still very much in the air. This is all very early prototype uh, type stuff. I'm really interested to see more about where the technology for this goes because as it stands, this is a lighting panel and it's all very good, but there's not a huge amount of flexibility in it innately. But what I would like to see, hopefully, would be maybe this sort of technology uh, used in some of the Hydro X parts. I think it'd be really cool to have Capellix LEDs inside the uh, reservoirs or maybe you were to have them on distro plates. Perhaps they'll be doing those in the future. Certainly be interesting. Um, I'd also love to see them inside the chassis itself to be able to have like a power supply shroud or something that goes on the inside by the drive bays maybe. I think that'd be a really interesting area where you can put your lighting because at the moment lighting is pretty ubiquitous so having something a little bit different I think would be quite exciting. So obviously we've just had a look at the Capellix systems which have a huge amount of LEDs in them. Now they're a long way away but we need to be able to control things now. And if anyone who's built it with a lot of RGB stuff in the past can tell you right now that it's a real nightmare trying to control everything with just one piece of software. So what Corsair has done is they've teamed up with uh, Asus to come up with a system which allows uh, IQ to be able to control Asus parts from the motherboard. So now you can have your motherboard lighting controllable in Aura. And also, the other cool thing is that some of the parts that are Corsair made can also be controlled in Aura as well. So all of the parts on the motherboard, say you've got the, uh, the lighting on the motherboard itself, graphics cards, other parts like that, which would normally be controlled by Aura, can be controlled in IQ. And then vice versa, a few things from IQ can now be controlled. And I think the pl there are plans to add future components. So at the moment, it's just going to be the memory, so like the uh, RGB um, dominated platinum. But they're going to be thinking about adding maybe fans, potentially LEDs, but we're not entirely sure about that yet. And we don't know have any time frames for it. But all that matters at the moment is that that should make things a fair bit easier to control when you've got different pieces of software without having as many clashes as before. So moving from all the RGB to absolutely no RGB, uh, I'm here with uh, Mitch, the cooling PM, um, to take a look at the new Corsair air cooler. So this is the A500, is it right? Yep, A500. So this is our first air cooler in eight years. Right, Our last generation was the A50, A70. So uh, with this one, we took a little bit of a different approach. Right, We aimed for high-end performance and really, really easy installation. That was kind of the goal. Um, so from the ground up, I mean, performance with the air cooler, it's a little easier than designing a liquid cooler, per se, right? I mean, air coolers have been around for years and years and years. Uh, we designed it with a quad heat pipe approach instead of the usual six or seven heat pipes that are smaller diameter. Um, so here we have a 6886 design. You'll see the outside heat pipes are a little smaller, so those are going to turn on faster. They're going to work at your low loads, right? The ones in the middle are eight millimeters, so those are gonna kick on toward the higher end of the TDP range, 100 plus, 150. They'll start working a lot better than these six as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I see you've gone with the direct heat pipe approach as yes. well on this one. And of course, there's no innate RGB on this one. So you think it's a different target market, isn't it? That's going to be going potentially for a, yeah, a high-end yeah. cooler like of this. Course. Which is perhaps of course, of course. I um, think, you know, the people that like air coolers, they're a little classier, they don't need all the, the lights and the RGB, the customizability, right? They just need it to work, it needs to work well, it needs to be quiet at low loads. Um, but also, they're usually power users too, so installation is always kind of on the lower end um, of most manufacturers. Where Here, this is going to be way easier to install than a lot of other coolers. Yeah, now speaking of installation actually, so you've got one here. 
obviously this is absolutely huge and I think <laughs> one of the things that caught me with the uh, presentation was um, obviously a lot of Corsair's memory modules are very very tall as well and so these fans have like they slot into these these frames here which slide yeah, on don't they slide it right off so yeah you have about 12 positions here and you can raise it really I mean if you had a RAM stick that was for some reason you know 130 millimeters tall then it would be able to support that but ideal, ideally uh, you'd be using something like uh, LPX RAM which doesn't have any LEDs because it would sit underneath this and you kind of cover it um, but if you did want that like kind of underglow look yeah you could slide it right on up a couple positions it'll fit Dominator Vengeance RGB Pro really anything that we make mm -hmm. Yeah, the other thing I find quite I quite like about that as well is that some of obviously with a lot of motherboards nowadays coming with um, integrated I/O shrouds, uh, and some of them are completely unremovable as well yes. because they act as the heat sinks. So being able to move these kind of fans up and down a little bit can add a little bit more uh, headroom on that because I found that quite difficult with some of the low-profile ones. Yep. where they uh, they have a habit of just sneaking just onto the top of that. So that was uh, I think that's quite an interesting feature. Um, and it seems much easier to use than the sort of fiddly fan clips that you sort of yes, get with most yes. coolers nowadays. Many times have we, uh, when we were designing this and using competitor coolers, um, you know, had a sacrifice to the, the heatsink gods, or we sliced our finger open yeah. and drew some blood. Um, so yeah, we don't have to worry about that here. It's much easier. Slide them on, slide them off. Uh, if you're installing it and you wanted to take the fans off, you could. You actually access the screws through the top here, through this cavity with an included screwdriver. So now you have a fancy custom Corsair screwdriver in your kit. All right, fantastic. And of course, speaking about performance, um, these are obviously going to be for both the uh, mainstream sockets, no problem. How about the larger sockets as well? So like Threadripper and... In uh, theory, these, this would work perfectly fine with a Threadripper processor. But from our testing, from looking at it, the best absolute experience is going to be an air, a liquid cooler, mm. right? Air coolers, you could, but you'd want something bespoke, something with a larger uh, contact area. So we kind of opted to not support STR4 with this product. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, if the reaction from customers is good and there's a demand for the STR4 version, who says we don't make one, right? Yeah, makes sense. And then the mounting system for this one yes. is, um, so you have like two mounting bars that go on top of the uh, socket itself and then you sort of screw it down from the top through the center with a screwdriver. Exactly. Right? So sort of exactly. similar to the Noctua style yes. type thing. Yes, very similar to the other stuff you'll see in the market, but the main difference is going to be uh, we use standoffs on all the Intel stuff yeah. instead of screws and spacers for the brackets. So it's a little easier than that. It's our way to improve on that. Um, unfortunately, supporting AM3 and AM4 without using spacers is kind of problematic. Um, so for the AMD ones, we still have to use the spacers. But in the future, we kind of try to look at that and see if we can engineer something that's a little more uh, modular, something that works better than spacers. Because me personally, I don't really like doing that and using them. They're kind of loose. They're easy to move around on the board when you're installing it. So. And do you think you are going to be uh, looking at air coolers more in the future as well, maybe? So maybe some smaller units for small form factor chassis, or are you going yeah, to stick I mean, to the big ones? I think that if we, if, if we have a good reaction from this, from consumers you know, end users, uh, there's no, way, no reason that we wouldn't make a smaller one, that we wouldn't make a larger one, things like that, and really kind of help grow the family. Just as we've done with the air cooler, or the liquid coolers. Uh, that we have, right? Yeah. And obviously this is going to be quite top end of the market. So this is about what, $100, $100 or yes. so? Yeah. Okay. And when are we going to be seeing this on shelves again? So you should, should see it on shelves next week right. in Fantastic. small quantities. Large quantities toward the end of January. All right. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Mitch. No problem. Thanks for coming.